So we've been talking about all these ways that we can hack our ability to engage in these better behaviors, better thought patterns, and better emotions. And another thing that we can hack to do that is our associations. We have these minds that are very good at picking up on connections in the world, what researchers call associations, which we're going to define as these mental connections between concepts, behaviors, events, feelings that are formed through experience. When you see things connected in the world temporally, you form this association, you form this connection between them, and it just like lives in your mind for a long time. To see some of these natural associations that your brain has picked up, if I put up this image, it wouldn't be so surprising if I put this, right? Your brain kind of expects it. Or if I put this image up, for those of you who like memes, you expect, like, like you have it. You're somewhere in your brain is that connection, right? You're just associated. But the key is our brain picks up on these associations so easily we can use them to try to do behaviors that we want to do a little bit more. And we can do that, harness these associations better through what researchers refer to as implementation intentions. What are implementation intentions? Well, it's a strategy where you want to remind yourself of an if-then plan. If something happens, then I will do a behavior that will promote my happiness. But you repeat it in your head over and over again so you get this associative connection. And the remarkable thing is when you do this right, as soon as the thing, if this happens, as soon as that happens, you kind of get that plan, that good behavior that you wanted for free. It makes it easier to do that good behavior. This is a little bit abstract. So let's look at implementation intentions in action. Let's say you're the kind of person who forgets your keys all the time. You leave your house to go to school, you forgot your keys, and now you're locked out. How can you get your keys? Well, you can use an implementation intention. You could figure out, okay, I need an if-then plan. If something happens, remember my keys. And you realize, coat, you have to, in like the you know, time of the year when it's not 100 degrees out like it is today, you usually have to take a coat to like go outside. And so you repeat the following association in your head. If I put on my coat, remember to check for my keys. Put on my coat, remember to check for my keys. Put on my coat, remember. And you like replay that in your head. And naturally what happens is as soon as you're putting on your coat, you have the memory like, coat, it's a cue. Just like the habit loop, your brain's like, oh yeah, cue. And you seem to remember, check for your keys, right? And the evidence suggests it doesn't just make it easier for you to remember, it also makes it easier for you to do it. And this is the power of implementation intentions. When you rehearse implementation intention, you know, when it's Tuesday and I get home from school, I'm gonna do my meditation. When it's Tuesday and I get home from school, I'm gonna do my meditation. It just makes it easier for you to do that behavior. And so implementation intentions are powerful and there's a couple awesome things about them that are good for hacking our behavior. One is that because you say, if this thing, you wind up focusing your attention on a specific cue that your brain is waiting for. It's waiting for you to put on the jacket. It's waiting for you to get home at a certain time. You get to pick the cue and rehearse it in your brain so that it makes it easier for you to do this behavior. In addition, they, you get an association for free between that cue and whatever you've planned to do. So you're making this like tight connection between the behavior you want and the cue that you've seen, making it easier for you to do the behavior. And finally, implementation intentions have these features where you can use them to do a particular behavior, like I want to remember my keys, or you can use them to inhibit a behavior. If this happens, don't do this other thing. So you can use it to stop bad habits too. So one of my favorite studies that looked at the power of implementation intentions to use all these strategies we've been talking about happened in the context of a study that looked at athletes who were trying to reduce their negative thoughts. So if you're an athlete in high school, you probably sometimes know that right before a meet or right before you're supposed to do something, you can get in these negative spirals where you talk badly to yourself. What if you use implementation intentions to fight that using all the strategies we talked about? And so these researchers had athletes do this. They would have them do the implementation intention. If I feel scared, so you're a basketball player, and you feel scared at your free throws, if I feel scared at my free throw, I will calm myself down and say, Laura, you're gonna do fine. You're gonna hit the, you're gonna hit the basket, you're gonna win, right? If I get scared at my free throw, I'm gonna think, Laura, you can do this. And you just practice it enough and you can do it better. What do these researchers find? Well, they find it's a powerful strategy, not just to get these athletes to reduce their negative thoughts, but also to perform better. So they actually like do better athletically once they're using these strategies. And so implementation intentions sound great. How can we implement them? Well, again, we have our psych pro tips. And our psych pro tip here isn't just to use implementation intentions. It's to kind of soup up the implementation intentions you use through the use of an even more complicated acronym that involves them and it's an acronym known as WHOOP. 
um, you can whoop it up to achieve your goals. What is whoop? Well, it's an implementation and intention strategy that the NYU researcher Gabrielle Oettingen has come up with, like a quick acronym that we can use whenever we want to do something. And whoop stands for wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. And so here's how it works. The WHOOP method is one in which you pick a particular goal. That's your wish, the first part of the acronym. What's your goal? I want to meditate more. And you sit there and you think about it. But then you do the second step, which is the outcome. What would be the outcome? Man, if I meditated more, I'd be calmer. Like I'd get all those benefits that Professor Santos was talking about. It would just be great. But then you do the next O step, which is the obstacles. OK, it would be great. But what are the obstacles? You're like, ah. Uh, get really busy when I get home from school. Like, you know, it's like hard to kind of sit down, you know, da, da, da. you're coming up with all these reasons you might not do it. And that's when you load in the implementation intention. The last step is the P, which just stands for your if then plan. So you say, okay, you know, if I feel busy after school, if I feel busy after school, then I will, you know, just remind myself it's only five minutes and just sit down and do it, right? You know, if I am like tempted, you know, my, my wish is that I want to get off TikTok, like, oh, the outcome would be, oh, that would be great. I'd have so much more free time. I'd feel less stressed out. What are the obstacles? Oh, I'm really tempted for TikTok. You know, the notification goes off and I just want to look at it. Ah, if then plan. If notification, put phone in my pocket. If notification, phone in my pocket. Gabrielle Ettingen has found that the WHOOP method is an incredibly powerful way to get through to goals that are otherwise really hard. Um, one of my favorite studies was done by the researcher Angela Duckworth and colleagues on this. She taught fifth graders this WHOOP technique and had them use the WHOOP technique for some important goal at school. So this was often something like improving their GPA, their school attendance, or whatever. So you pick a, a, a wish that you want about your school performance and you use WHOOP. What happened? Well, in every domain that she looked at, the WHOOP method worked a lot. Relative to controls for GPA, for example, these students who were taught the WHOOP method were able to get significant increases in GPA. So you can use it to kind of hack your academics, but you can use it also to hack all these behaviors we've been talking about for your happiness. And so that is the power of our associations. They're just going to happen naturally. Your brain is ready to do them. Why not use them to promote your happiness? Mm -hmm.